what is it with this uh, thing about masculinity, Mock? They're trying to convince Americans that uh, being soft and being weak and emasculated is the new masculine. And that's not going to fly. I mean, that's just yeah. not going to fly with regular women who appreciate actual masculine men. Yeah. I, I don't know what the strategy is, but Doug Emhoff is a soy manlet. And he has, yeah. I mean, he's not inspiring yes, to men. It's time for the Michelle Tafoya podcast. It's always fun to talk with Mock and Daisy, the chicks on the right, but I want to acknowledge a couple things. We're getting closer to the anniversary of October 7th, and I, I want to make sure we give that its due, and hopefully we will have a chance to do that in more depth next week. But also, um, the folks down in the hurricane-torn areas in the southeast, whether it's Asheville, North Carolina, parts of Georgia, parts of, parts of Florida, it's South Carolina, Tennessee, eastern Tennessee, they've really been hit hard. So please find a way if you can to even chip in five bucks. If you could forego a Starbucks today and think about those people, that would be really great. Also, please subscribe, download, uh, never miss an episode. We have so many amazing guests coming up. And in the past, you'll want to explore everything we've done, especially leading up to this, to this election. So stay tuned. Chicks on the right are next. We're going to talk about Kamala, her husband, Doug, Tim Walls, uh, Biden, Trump, you name it, we're going to talk about it. And why, why, why are so many people just obsessed with abortion? I'm pro-choice, by the way. Stay tuned. It's all coming up. Welcome back to Mock and Daisy, the chicks on the right. Miriam and Amy Jo. They told me I could call them anything. I, 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 I don't want to just totally abuse that. Welcome <laughs> back, ladies. Um, one of the things that we wanted to talk about today for sure was, you know, we're all women, <laughs> even though we don't have our pronouns listed on our, <laughs> our camera shots. I think people know. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we're just going to vote for a woman for president just because she's a woman. So with that in the crosshairs, uh, there are many, many things to talk about. First of all, um, let's just acknowledge that what's going on in the Southeast right now in North Carolina. I, I used to live in Charlotte and I'd take these weekend trips to Asheville. I absolutely love that place. And it is, it's, it's biblical what's going on there. Um, <sighs> what, what, Mark, what do you, how has well, the I, response been, do you think? Well, it, it's, it's, it's so much worse, I think, in many ways than Katrina, and people are not treating it that way. And yeah. I think it's because you don't expect a mountainous region like that to be impacted by a hurricane. So I think in, in some respects, people are just like, what? I mean, that doesn't make sense, the, the, the level of devastation. Um, but, you know, Charlotte is 10 minutes away from where my kid goes to college right now. So he's very, very close to the action. And I'm surprised that just, you know, if it would have shifted just the tiniest bit east, he would have been right in those crosshairs. And so it's alarming how devastating it is and how actual full towns have just been wiped away. And, and, and Daisy, you know, I was reminded this morning that during Katrina, George Bush W waited two days to go. It's been four days mm -hmm. and we, and today is the first day we've heard anything from this white house, either the president or vice president. Yeah, I, but but of course the media will not thrash them the way they did W. Exactly, because there's that double standard between Republicans and Democrats, right? But I, you know, I look at I was in just furious over the weekend because I was thinking I, the federal response to this has been so dismal and just it's it's just not, none of it is okay. It's just not okay, and so much money has been sent overseas. We should have handled this immediately. And there should have been a response from this administration immediately. And it's just disgraceful how they've handled it. It's it's just not OK. And nobody, whether you're a liberal or whether you're a conservative, should think that it is OK the way yeah. they've handled it. You know, it's it's interesting. We can do two things at the same time. But the amount of money we have sent uh, to Ukraine and and right? I'm not he I'm not here to litigate the case for or against that. But that's another country on another continent. And here we are seeing crime on the rise because of our border here in America. We're seeing the devastation from these floods. We're seeing all kinds of crap. And it seems like people 
here in America are going, well, what, what about us? I mean, right. I think, I think mock that that's, that's a lot of the feeling that's driving the perception of this administration right now. Yeah. And, and it's because, and that, that is such a striking difference between the two campaigns, right? Because I, I mean, Trump just even said over the weekend or perhaps even today, I put America first because that's what I care about. And that's the job that if I'm president again, that's who I'm, that's who I'm tasked with caring about. That's who I'm tasked with keeping safe. And Kamala and Biden, that entire administration has always been focused on everybody else. It's, it's either Ukraine or it's the freaking illegals. You know what I mean? It's never American citizens that we are always last on their list of priorities. Always. Yeah, but and we're the one who pay, we're the ones who pay the bills. We pay the bills, <laughs> and we right. also try to dictate to Israel how to handle their business. Mm -hmm. And they are proving, uh, I think, Daisy, that they know what they're doing. Oh and they, yeah, they've oh got to put these enemies away. Yeah, I, they totally do, and they they also prove it by you know um, winning through strength. And, right. and peace through strength. And yes. that's something that we could also we could take a little lesson in that because we we don't do that. I think Trump does that. But we the administration that we have in power right now is they're definitely not doing that. And, you know, I mean, just going back to all the money and how we spend it on so many other things besides America, we are just a huge dumpster fire at this point. Um, and that's one of the things, at least as a mom, I look around and I think, you know, if I have a budget in place for my household, I would if I were spending it on all these other things and money was going out all over the place and my household was bleeding out, mm -hmm. I would make sure that I would bring some of that money back in. I would I would tighten up my purse strings. I mean, we know as mothers how to handle a budget. Right. And this is something that this administration that just government in general doesn't know, they don't know how to do that. And as taxpayers, as mom, we get really frustrated because we're like, where's all this money going? Yeah. Why is it that we can't take care of our own first? And then we're called xenophobic, we're called racist, we're called all these things. And we just want to be, I guess, mindful <laughs> of where the money's going and mindful of, we wanna make sure that people in our own country, people in our own towns and our own states are taken care of. And I don't think that's too much to ask. No, I, I don't either. And it's, it's, it's not only being mindful. Look, I think all parents, I think when you get right down to it, all human beings want a sense of security and safety. Right. And we're getting neither of those right now. Uh, mm -hmm. I can tell you in, in my town, uh, in the area I live, I live in Tim Walz's Minnesota. So that'll be your first hint. Things have just <laughs> plummeted here. And I, I, I got to tell you, I can't wait to leave. Um, it would take a, a it would take a lot of change to get me to stay, but I don't I don't think that's going to happen. Um, and so, and then you look at the way that Ron DeSantis is handling the the response to this stuff in Florida and Brian Kemp in Georgia. It just seems like it's really it's not that tough to say mm -hmm. where are the biggest problems, what needs our resources, and let's take care of it. I don't understand, Mock, why that is looked at as selfish or xenophobic, as she said, or white supremacist, you know, all of these names, that's all the left has to throw at us is names because their arguments aren't any good. Well, and I mean, now you're talking about my man, right? So like, if you, <laughs> if you mention Governor Ron DeSantis, I'm like, I'm She's, his number one fan. She starts purring. <laughs> I oh, start yeah. purring. Are you purring right now? <laughs> Wait, let's because see. there is no better example of how to lead. And on every single issue, it doesn't matter what is thrown at that Florida governor, he is always out in front of it. And I, I don't know why. I mean, Brian Kemp is also doing a fine job. I think, you know, Florida obviously has had its hands full with hurricanes. They know very well how to tackle them. But DeSantis specifically was the first to immediately say, I'm sending resources, even though Florida was hit bad by this hurricane right. too. But he immediately sent any extra resources he could to North Carolina, to mm -hmm. Georgia, to South Carolina, where it was needed. And it's just such an example of how he knows how to allocate resources. You can see the staging area for the line workers that he sets up ahead of every storm. Like yep. they have it down to a science. And he also knows when it's best to start cutting or at least stopping uh, for now temporarily any unnecessarily uh, unnecessary bureaucracy that gets right. in the way of getting right. aid to people. He yeah. always knows how to do those things. And I just wish more people 
would govern the way that he governs. Yeah, here's the thing. Here's what will happen. I mean, I, this morning I was watching DeSantis in a press conference say, you know, this restaurant is ruined. They still want to operate out of a food truck. But some department in Florida said, ah, I don't know, there's some bureaucracy there. And he said, we don't have time for right. bureaucracy. Bureaucracy mm -hmm. Set an emergency measure to let this restaurant operate. But here's the thing, Daisy. You can mention the name Ron DeSantis and everyone on the left will go, but abortion, but, <laughs> but, but, but don't say gay. Right. I mean, they immediately jump to those things. But books. Yeah. But, that kind yeah, of, but, but yeah. ban books that you can still mm -hmm. get on Amazon. Yeah. And, and they forget that he is doing exactly what he should be doing. And that is making sure that, that Floridians and, and people beyond that, cause he's helping other people too, are safe. That's, you know, you nailed it when you said like, we want to feel safe and secure. And I go back to that because that is the number one job of government is to make sure that they're yes. that we are safe and they're failing us. Mm -hmm. They are failing us at every level when it comes to just the crime in this country from our border being wide open, just crime in general going up, our cities decaying. I mean, they're not doing the job that they are tasked to do, that we pay them to do, and that is to keep us safe. And it's also, we're seeing it with, you know, the natural disasters too, when they are supposed to come in and help us because we pay taxes for them to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they're not they're not doing their job. And so I think a lot of people out there are just they're frankly, they're pissed off because it's they're they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. The, people have every right to be angry. I hear from so many people that they have trouble sleeping, and I'm one of them. Um, just coming out of shoulder surgery, so the sleep doesn't come as easily. Well, and quite frankly, look, we're all so stressed out these days that you wake up in the middle of the night and you're going, oh my gosh, your mind starts spinning. So I want to tell you the thing that I've found that helps me sleep better. It's a cream. It's not a, a, a medication that you have to take with water. It's a cream. And I was a skeptic, but I tried it and it works and it helped me last night when I woke up in the night. It's called sleep cream and they use all natural CBD combined with the finest essential oils. It smells really nice too, but it just, it goes on easy. It absorbs. I put it on my forearms. Sometimes I put it on the bottoms of my feet uh, and it just helps you relax within minutes. I my body is just allowed to do what it needs to do. And that's sleep. You can find them at sleepcream.com. Just type sleep cream for a couple of nights. See if it works for you as well as it works for me. And if you don't experience better sleep, sleep cream will refund your purchase guaranteed. You don't even have to return anything. Go to sleepcream.com and that's sleepcream.com with cream spelled C-R-E-M-E, -E, like creme, sleepcream.com. And for the next few weeks, Use the code game day at checkout to save 20 bucks off your order. That's game day, all one term at checkout for a $20 savings. If you're ready for your best sleep ever, sleepcream.com, sleep, C-R-E-M-E.com. Check them out and use the code game day to save 20 bucks. The, people have every right to be in. Yeah. I mean, and, and, but you know, the, so the three of us women are sitting here and I happen to be pro choice, uh, to us with, with constraints. You know, I don't think you leave a, a live fetus on the table when a, an abortion gets botched, but here in Minnesota, we, we do that. Thank you, governor Tim walls. Um, I think that's inhumane and disgusting and barbaric to leave a human being. Uh, on the table just because it can't speak for itself, I think. And because the person who birthed it doesn't want, I, I look. Um, so anyway, having said that, I still am pro-choice in the first trimester. Um, and having said that, we're all women. Why are so many women, Taylor Swift uh, among them? And we don't really have to go beyond that because she is the most famous woman in the world. Just so concerned about reproductive rights above all else, above say, you know who will never have reproductive rights? Lake and Riley, uh, you know, right. uh, and all the other, we could go through a list of the women who have been murdered in this country by illegal immigrants. Mm -hmm. Why are women so petrified about this one thing that is 
I realize that in some states, the 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 action has been rather extreme, and I'm not a fan of that. But I also I do know that since Roe was was turned over, the abortion numbers in this country didn't go down; they went up. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, as far as Taylor Swift is concerned, the reason that she cares so much about that issue is because she doesn't have to care about any of the others, yeah. right? I mean, she doesn't yep. have to worry about security. She doesn't have to worry about the economy. She's a billionaire, so, like, it doesn't matter. So she just latches on to what the Democrats are best at messaging about, which mm-hmm. just happens to be abortion. And so you, I think, fall into where the majority of women do. I think there's, you know, there's obviously pro-lifers, and we would consider ourselves, for the most part, pro-life, but we're also, we we would much rather see fewer abortions, yeah. but then and and in that to that end, have reasonable restrictions, um, but not get crazy. Like there's some, you know, there's some bills where we talk about like the six week heartbeat bill. That's that is pretty extreme, and I don't think it it accomplishes what it needs to accomplish. Mm-hmm. So I mean, that's a whole other topic. But yeah. but I think the. That women, that Democrats are very, very good. They have been very, very good about messaging on this topic and they fear monger to women enough that the dumbasses among us believe it. And they think this is the most important thing and I'm losing rights as a woman. And they, mm-hmm. they just forget everything else. Yeah. I mean, when you get, when you rights, get, Daisy. Well, I mean, that's the thing is, well, that's the thing is you get a lot of these Democrats on a stage at the DNC convention and they're, they're like, you know, the project, what was it? Project 25, is it project 2025? Yeah. 2025 that they think is actually his agenda, which is not Trump's agenda to begin with. But man, there's so many that parroted that. And then on top of that, you know, they'll, they go as far as to scare women into thinking that, you know, Trump and Vance are going to track their menstrual cycles. (laughs) It's ridiculous, but they believe, and that's the thing, like Mock said, it's, it's a lot of fear mongering and they believe it. And when you, you put fear, you instill fear into women about their bodies, they're going to get kind of, I guess, for lack of a better phrase, bejiggity about that. You know what I mean? They're going to get all, oh my God. I don't know that there is a better phrase than that. There's no better (laughs) phrase than that. Right. It's like, they're going to get scared and like freaked out about, oh my God, they're coming for me. They're coming for and I don't want them to take that. And they have just run with that because they know that fear is such a, it's such a useful tool. And man, they have always, the 15 years we've been doing this, we have watched that and they have always used fear mm-hmm. as a tactic. And it's just, it's so gross the way they do that, but it works. I mean, it, it, it absolutely works. And and a lot of it is based on, on lies. The thing that, that totally, the, the, the misinformation that they supposedly want to control. Mm-hmm. How is it okay to say that, Trump and Vance want to ban IVF when that is completely opposite of what Trump it said. I, I mean, completely uh, untrue. it's just, it's, it's a lie. And he, wants, get, so he oh, actually, he actually wants to pay for it. Exactly. And we don't, and we're like, we don't agree with that because yeah, we think conservatives, <laughs> conservatives yeah. shouldn't want to, we, we really don't want to pay for your, no. I mean, it's fine to get it, but we yes. don't want to pay for that. That's something yes. that you should pay for yourself. So it's quite the opposite. It's just that that's not the messaging and man, they are good at taking that and running with it. And so, and they'll believe I, what, it. What disappoints me about that is it, they may be good with taking it and running with it. But it disappoints me that so many fall for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know if that's just politics and that's just the way this game is going. And the people that hate Trump so much will hear anything that they want to hear. To I, I mean, look, I, I hate to bring up The View, but the fact that that show is on television and <laughs> that they ha- had the gall, that Whoopi Goldberg had the gall to say that the vitriol is only coming from one direction, meaning the Republican side. You know, oh, this is not a two-way thing. This is not a two-way. You've called him Hitler. You've said he yeah. should be squashed like a bug. Yeah, right. I, I, not a two-way thing. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, talk about misinformation. I mean, that is insane. But I'm not going to tell her to shut up. And I'm not going to tell her she doesn't have a right to say whatever the hell she wants. But I would right. urge people to, to try to... Learn a little bit of both sides because it's just so misrepresentative of the truth. Oh my god! Yeah, there's ever? there is a whole lot of hate there. I mean, there really is, and I think they're just so freaked out. Some of these people are just brainwashed into thinking that he is Hitler and that he is evil and he is racist and he's all these things. And then they're some of the same people who loved him and revered him like six years ago. 
you know, including on the View. Including the, yeah, a lot of the. I love the when they run those clips from the View yeah. when he was on there, and you know, Whoopi was hugging him and the whole bit, mm -hmm. and it's they thought he was on their side. You know, um, Mary Al uh, Alice Mary Alice Marie Johnson, right? Yeah, yeah, Alice Marie Johnson. Do I have that right, John Berg, my producer? I do. Okay. <laughs> She, I, I, cause, because she has the two first names, Alice mm -hmm. Marie, I keep inverting them, but she was the woman who Kim Kardashian lobbied to get out of prison. I had yes. her on the podcast last week. What a ray of light she is. Now, for people who don't know, well, first of all, go back and listen to the podcast. But secondly, um, she's a black woman who was the mother of five, had lost a ton of things, lost her husband, lost one of her kids, lost her job. And she got caught up in a drug ring where she didn't touch the drugs. She didn't deliver the drugs, but she was involved in the drug ring and in, in some of the, the trafficking and the drug ring got broken up. She was thrown in jail for life plus 25 years. Oh my gosh. Okay. So th there are, there are issues with our criminal justice, the uh, federal, yeah. the federal and, and state criminal justice that need looking at. But Kim Kardashian had the gumption to go to the president and say, could we look at this please? And I, I talked to, to Alice Marie. And she said, you know, I have sat with President Trump and he has said to me, there are more people in prison like you. How many more are there? And she looked at him and she said, a lot. And he Gosh. said, help me find them. Wow. So I, and she has said that there's nothing racist about this man. So at, you know, he got this reputation uh, and maybe he got it in the seventies. Uh, I, I, I don't know. You know, people like to, to to exaggerate all of these things that were going on, mm -hmm. uh, that he wouldn't let black people live in his buildings. I find I, I, I don't know anything about that. So I really don't want to talk about something I don't know the facts on. But um, I, I just I have a hard time seeing this when so many of his actions point in the other way, Mark. Right. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it's absolutely true. I, I remember um, we were gifted with his book of letters, you know, the book that that like the coffee table yes. book. And I, I remember just being struck by as you go through it, all the thank you letters that he had received from all kinds of people who he helped, you know, with with finances or in other ways that he was so giving and compassionate about mm -hmm. just human interest stories. And it's not you just never see that side of him. I don't know if that's because he's too, I don't think it's because he's too humble. Cause that's not usually a word that you hear with Trump. I don't yeah. think it's because of humility, but I, I think that his team would, would help him by sharing more of those stories. Cause there's a lot of them mm -hmm. and it's not, it's, it spans the races, right? So, I mean, he has never cared about the race or the color of someone's skin if they needed help. Um, and people just don't see that softer, more generous side of him very often. And I think it's a shame because yeah, it's it, definitely there. It's the media, the media, t they paint with, the, they paint you how you should be painted in yeah. their eyes. And then yeah. they, they go with that. And then it's, I think the minute he had an R after his name, yeah. they were like, everything okay, changed, this is, right? everything changed for yeah. him. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So we we all we don't have to go back and talk about how Joe Biden got the boot and Kamala Harris got the AOK, -okay, <laughs> but she never had to campaign for this position, which is really mm -hmm. remarkable. She's campaign campaigning now, if you can call it that. But she didn't have to. Uh, this is a, one of the most amazing turns of events in American political history, I think, the way this all unfolded. Yeah. But here is Kamala Harris, uh, a woman of color. And because she's a woman of color, people, I think the Democrat Party believe that we all should just love her and vote for her. Mm -hmm. And Daisy, um, there are a lot of women I could get behind. Um, but this one I cannot because whereas Joe Biden is a vessel for the left, she is the left. She is a leftist, as is Tim Walz, her vice presidential candidate. What she's, are your biggest hangups with Kamala Harris? She's farther left than Bernie Sanders. She's a total flip flop. She's a, everything that comes out of her mouth is a lie. And she was implanted. She was inserted there by a cabal via a coup. You know, I mean, like the, the, they've been preaching to us about democracy for years. You're, see, he's a threat. to She's a threat to democracy. <laughs> it's like we anybody with half a brain cell can see that. So, I mean, it, just her policies, her everything that she stands for is 
she doesn't, I mean, we know what she stands for from years ago, right? So all the things that she's saying now that she stands for is they're all lies. So we know her policies are disastrous because everything that Joe Biden did, she also is attached to whether she wants right. to detach from them or not. And we know what those things are, whether it be the border or the economy or, you know, it, transgenders in sports, you know, right. stuff like that. I mean, she is attached to all of that and she cannot detach herself from them. She's a disaster, a total disaster. I, I, I can't disagree with you. Um, I, you know, I was born and raised in California. I see what's happened to, to my beautiful home state. Um, my mom spent her entire life there. She just died about a year ago and, uh, it was just heartbroken by what happened to California. But I mean, she was 92. She had no reason to move. Yeah. Um, I still have friends and relatives there. I mean, California is one of the most beautiful it is. You know, geographical spots on the mm -hmm. globe. I have a son there. We oh, have a, a boy there. Yeah, it's beautiful, but man, they're ruining it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the taxes and, and yeah. you have to ask yourself, where are these, where is this money going? They can't buy a house. Yeah, they're young and they can't, they, yeah. there's no way they can afford a house. Yeah. No, it's, um, well, so should we then mock just have the government build us all kinds of housing and take over <laughs> that part yeah because our... we know when the government takes over stuff that's when it gets really good right yeah totally <laughs> i mean that's the thing the whole the, the whole idea of voting for kamala because it's going to shatter some sort of ceiling is so crazy to me and like you there's plenty of other fantastic women that i would love to vote for mm -hmm. in the future mm -hmm. uh, that i would love to see climb to the highest rank in the country but she is not it. And it's because her policies affect women in really right. terrible ways. Yeah. And I don't know why. I mean, unrealized capital gains, yeah. that affects women's. Raising corporate taxes affects women. I mean, ending Trump's tax cuts, letting those expire, that will affect us as women. And why women are just like, but I like the vibe and not paying attention to the policies. I'm just, I, I'm just we shake our head on a daily basis yeah. about how surrounded by dumbasses we are. Well, I mean, and we've unfortunately, already, we've many are, of them are women. <laughs> right. And the thing is, we've already been affected for the past yeah. almost four years. And yeah. that's why I, I don't, you know, she talks about the dumbassery and it's like, we look around and we're like, are you not paying for the same gas and the same groceries <laughs> that we're paying for? Cause I mean, unless you are, like you said, Taylor Swift, we are paying for those things. We're trying to get our kids through college. We're trying to pay for retirement or at least save for retirement. We're worried about our 401ks. We're worried about all sorts of things. We're worried about like her boy. She's worried about having to maybe go to war. Mm -hmm. These are, you know, valid concerns uh, that yeah. women have. And you, you bring that up, and this is really important. Everyone's saying, oh, Trump's going to start World War III. Oh, my okay. goodness. So are you feeling overwhelmed by the increasing cost of health insurance? Have you had enough of not having control over your own health care dollars? Introducing ShareRight, health care done the right way. At ShareRight, you're not just a number, you're part of a caring community and forget about paying excessive premiums. Get this, with ShareRight, you stand to save 30 to 50% compared to health insurance. Imagine what you could do with all of that saving. Uh, but it's more than just savings. ShareRight ensures you have access to the care you deserve exactly when you need it, from routine checkups to unexpected emergencies. With ShareRight, your health care is their top priority. Empower yourself today by taking control of your health care costs. Visit sharerightorg slash Tafoya. You see it there on the screen, T-A-F-O-Y-A, to learn more and see how much you can save. Visit sharerightorg slash Tafoya. That's S-H-A-R-E. R I G H T dot org slash Tafoya, T A F O Y A, for healthcare done the right way. Everyone's saying, oh, Trump's going to start World War III. Oh, my okay. goodness. Let's review the facts. There were there were no wars going on when Trump left right. office. And the minute the Biden-Harris campaign or the Biden-Harris team took the White House, 
we had this this statement from Biden. Well, if it's a minor incursion of Russia into <laughs> Ukraine, you know, that's one thing. Well, the minor incursion has turned into a full out war in which totally. so much so much death and destruction, both in Ukraine and Russia. Now, then you have October 7th of last year mm -hmm. um, uh, that, you know, just I, I get chills and I want to cry every time I think about it. Uh, it was so hideous. And here you've got the Biden administration saying, well, we'll help you, but you mm -hmm. know, ceasefire, ceasefire, ceasefire. Yeah. Got to get a deal. Ceasefire, ceasefire, ceasefire. Uh, mm -hmm. and meanwhile, uh, you know, kids on a soccer field were, were killed. Yeah. Um, we could go on and on. but And then Kamala gets up in a debate and says, we have no people, uh, are, you know, in active in active areas, in active theaters of war right now. Yep. And I thought the chef's kiss tweet that I saw was these, this group of soldiers in some sort of tent watching this on TV <laughs> and turning the camera yes. on themselves and going, guys, where the hell are we? What are we doing? Right. We're in harm's way. I mean, it was, exactly. it was beautiful, but it was also, again, it wasn't fact-checked and she just got away with saying it. But can you imagine her dealing with Iran? Dealing oh with Israel, just saying, you know, calm down, Israel. Really, yeah. there's got to be a, a diplomatic way out of this, even though they attacked you and killed 1,200 of your people. Can you imagine being a mom of one of those soldiers that oh. sent that tweet? I would just be oh enraged yeah. with that. I mean, I just can't and, even imagine. And they have never, this administration has never reached out to the 13 parents, the Gold no. Star families of the those who perished in Afghanistan during the hideous withdrawal mock yeah. um i i imagine her in those situations i imagine the people that she would put in her cabinet which if it's like this current cabinet it's it's based on a whole lot of dei mm -hmm. uh, let's be honest i mean yeah. it's like they wanted to check a box with every single uh, appointment and there's nothing wrong with diversity but if that's why you're hiring someone because they check a box, not because yeah. they can do the job. That doesn't make me feel real safe. It shouldn't. And I mean, you're right. Imagining Kamala in some of those environments where she has to be dealing with world, other world leaders contentiously and she doesn't have a script. Huh. I, I can't imagine because she is there's no one more impressed by Kamala's word salads than Kamala herself. She like gets <laughs> you've seen that face that she makes where she thinks she's saying something really profound right. where she'll say it and then she'll nod and then yes. she'll cackle. like this. You know, she just the nods cattle, yeah. forever after she says uh -huh. it. She is an empty suit and, mm. and the worst kind because she has this gigantic ego about how smart she is. Mm -hmm. And so I, I don't know, like some of the we talked about this in our show today about how so much of what this administration does and Kamala's campaign now does feels so scripted that it's just like they're acting a part in a movie. Mm -hmm. And I think she thinks that she can get away with that leading and being on a world stage dealing with these other leaders and you can't do that like you have to actually know things and understand things and have beliefs about things and she is clueless well, she but she actually but she, but she has gotten away with it thus oh, far she has. yeah she you know? has well yeah. she looked at maps remember she i <laughs> looked at the maps <laughs> Russia <laughs> is a big country yeah. next to Ukraine, Ukraine which, is, which a is a smaller country. country. A little bit smaller. <laughs> right. AI yeah. is artificial intelligence. <laughs> right. I mean, I, I hate really criticizing this woman to the extent that I am, but let's be honest. I don't. I'll do I it. don't either. We'll do it. We'll do it for you, Michelle. No, look, I'm going we'll I'm, I'm all in because because I, I, this is not to be vicious and negative. This is truth. Right. This is this is truth. Uh, mm -hmm. My friend Jerry Baker, who writes for the Wall Street Journal, says that Kamala blows bubbles of vacuity. I absolutely <laughs> love that statement. <laughs> she blows perfect. bubbles of vacuity. And I just thought that is so beautiful. Um, is. But you're right. I mean, look, to think of her, we've seen her unscripted. It does not go well. We've seen her scripted. She can she can memorize some lines and she can deliver mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. But that's not what you do when you're negotiating, negotiating with Iran. Exactly. And we see who, again, I, I'm trying to envision the people that she would put around her based on the fact that she thought she hit a home run with Tim Walls. 
Oh, this guy. Oh, this guy. Oh, okay, let's give you each a chance to take a swing <laughs> at the piñata that is Tim Walls. This okay, Tim Walls. mock you start. <laughs> you, you can go first. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I think Scott Jennings said it best when he just called him a buffoon who mm-hmm. doesn't know like what words mean, and that's uh, that's probably the most generous description of Tim Walls that I can offer because the guy is just a moron and he makes the, the fact that he's trying to be the every guy, you know, the regular guy, okay. he's so bad at it. He's so painfully cringe at it that mm-hmm. I think they're turning off regular guys. And, yeah. and, you know, Kamala's Kamala's got to count on the dumbass women because guys, I think, are are just turned off by the both of them. Yeah. yeah. I think the only thing worse than Tim Walls is Tim Walls' wife, Gwen. <laughs> <laughs> That's she. You know, I said the other day, I think. She's like a tab drinking jazzerciser <laughs> and she's totally. like wanting everybody to, to do like chants and cheers. And she is insufferable. Uh, yes. Okay. Then, then let's get to Doug M off a little bit because oh, I don't know goodness. if you guys saw that um, Jen Psaki has a show on MSNBC and she was mm-hmm. interviewing Doug M Hoff and she talked about how he has reshaped masculinity. Now I don't know what this obsession with masculinity and toxic masculinity is all about. Uh, frankly, I'll take, you know, SEAL Team 6 and yes. uh, that kind of masculinity when it comes to people who care about the country and want to keep it safe. Did you guys see, uh, hopefully we'll pull a clip here and show it to you, of this this quick interchange between Jen Psaki and Doug Emoff. And it he's was so like gross. smiling like uh, it was so gross. Cringe, very cringe. Important part, an interesting part of how people have talked about your role here is how your role has reshaped the perception of masculinity. And I'm not sure you planned on that, but you are a incredibly supportive spouse. Has that been an evolution for you? And do you think that's part of the role you might play uh, as first gentleman? It's funny. I've, I've started to think a lot about this. I've always been like this. My dad was like this. And what? What is it with this uh, thing about masculinity, Mock? <laughs> well, um, she what does she call him? A wife guy? I think that's a wife, the new it's term. It's a wife guy. It's a wife yeah. guy. Mm-hmm. And and she and the she one who impregnated the nanny. Exactly but, yes. right. <laughs> Such a wife guy. Is a wife yeah, guy. I mean, she, she was absolutely yes. like like batting her eyelashes, flirting with him. So that was gross right off right out of the gate. But but what they're trying to do is. They're trying to convince Americans that Uh. being soft and being weak and emasculated is the new masculine. And that's not going to fly. I mean, that's just not going to fly with regular women who appreciate actual masculine men. I I don't know what the strategy is, but Doug Emhoff is a soy manlet. And he has, I mean, he's not inspiring to men. Some of us like toxic men. We like it in our homes. We like toxic <laughs> masculinity. We like the guys that are very masculine. And, and I don't, the soy boys, we don't like. Yeah. I, mm-hmm. I, I, you know, I picture you, okay, you're a woman by yourself walking to your car and, you know, you get a choice of who's going to stand with you when a couple <laughs> people come at you to try to carjack you. Yes. Um, you know, is it going to be Doug Emhoff or is it going to be, you know, a Clint Eastwood type? I'll take Clint. I'll take, yes. you know, I, that, so it's just, it, it's weird. It's as though they're trying, they're trying to reframe gender and, and in, mm-hmm. in the whole a- appeal of things. Yeah. The future is feminine, says Justin Trudeau. I don't even know what that means, but you know, <laughs> this whole idea that, <laughs> that that there's Ugh. just this that that women and men should be more equal that women should not have to carry a child so they're inventing these ecto uteruses that you know you can blow Ugh. a baby outside of the uterus so gross i mean i, I what the hell I, this is not yeah. scientific <laughs> by any means Mm-mm. no it's really weird i actually i take clint eastwood at 90 over D- <laughs> doug <Emhoff. laughs> i mean it's like if i were outside getting attacked seriously that's and, what you and, want. Yeah. And Trudeau wanting it to be feminine. I mean, that's, is anybody surprised by Trudeau? 
wanting things to be more feminine. Let's all get real. No, it's yeah. not surprising at all. I'm it's looking weird. forward we- to seeing the masculinity shine with JD Vance on the debate stage. Exactly. Because that's when you're going to see what a man looks like yeah. against a guy who is man playing. And, he's a gen- and he's, a man. Also, he's also a gentleman, too. Yeah. I mean, he yeah. knows how to debate and do it in a way that is gentlemanly and also manly, if that makes any sense. Like, no, he's he- going to. He'll do a great job. Well, he, he did that. He used those two things that you just said, gentlemanly and strong, or manly, yes. or whatever you said. Mm-hmm. That, uh, not that I wasn't listening, but I, I, your terms. <laughs> yes. When when there was a, a restaurant that he couldn't get into the other day because the owner freaked out, and he turned mm. to the press and he said, look, look, do not hold it against this business. They got a yeah. little nervous about having us all in there. We took care of the tab. We gave him a tip, but please do not hold it against this business. Could there have been a classier way to handle that? No. I think it was perfection. Mm-hmm. It was. It, it was. absolutely was. It was. He's yeah. a class He's a class act guy. I mean, that's mm-hmm. who he is. And he could have handled it way differently because I don't believe that they were nice to him. Yeah, probably not. Yeah. Probably not. And by the way, um, when people say the American dream is dead, J.D. Vance went from dirt poor and some very uh, – questionable parenting tactics mm-hmm. all the way into making himself what he is right now. Yes. So if you think that, you know, white privilege is a thing, he never enjoyed it. Um, and mm-hmm. if you think that the American dream is dead, I tend, I disagree. I think that people just don't want to follow the, 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 the they don't want to work enough to make it happen. Mm-hmm. They want it all to be given to them. Mm-hmm. And that's what, you know, forgiving student loans and giving you 25 grand toward a house, which by the way, will raise home prices by about Ugh, 25 grand. So right. All of I'm those right. things uh, that, that this government dependence, no, 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 depend on yourself, right? I mean, where do I have it mm-hmm. wrong, Mock? Oh, no, that's absolutely right. And imagine then like reading, imagine reading J.D. Vance's story and then being Tim Walls who rips on him for it for actually wanting to go to an Ivy League for wanting to achieve the American dream and then getting made fun of for that by Tim Walls who is a complete loser who is a stolen valor idiot Mm -hmm. and the fact that he even tried to go after J.D. Vance and 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 then also has on the same Democrat DNC convention stage all these other people from Yale you know uh-huh. what I mean? Like it's, it was such, it was the worst possible insult. Oh. And I hope, hope, hope that that comes up on the debate and, stage. And I not to so mention too. billionaires, a bunch of billionaires. A bunch because, of billionaires. Yeah. I mean, they're the party of elitists now. We're yeah. the party of the working class. We're the party of the regular people. And they tried, they try so hard to make themselves that with Tim Walls. And it's like, we're not buying what you're selling people. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's it, this, it's going to take more than just this one guy who's out there going, I'm folksy. Yeah. <laughs> because it's it's not working with us. No, and um, I'll tell you what folksy has wrought in Minnesota. It's 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 led to kids not being able to read. It's led oh to a gosh. net negative migration. It's led to Ugh. soaring electricity costs, uh, crime on the rise. We used to be below the national average in crime. Now we're above the national average in crime. Unreal. So it's it's really been a disaster under this guy. And I hope that gets revealed during this debate. And I hope they ask him why he's such a fan of China um, and that he's been Mm, been there 30 times, that he spent his honeymoon there, uh, that his wedding date was on the anniversary of the Tiananmen Square massacre. I'd I'd like to, I, I, I'd love to dig deeper into all of that. I think he is, he's got a lot in his closet. Well, it's yeah. ABC though, so I wouldn't count on it. Oh, it's CBS <laughs> though. It's CBS. Oh, it CBS? Now, I don't CBS know that it's going to be any better, but I hope that <laughs> I not. hope that they learn from ABC that 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 you will you will get some backlash if you don't do it right. Yeah. yeah. But Vance is going to be a bulldog. He's going to be a, a very well-behaved bulldog. And you know Gwen mm. will be in the front row going like this. <laughs> there's be, no audience. And, and so he'll be pointing oh, at people. Oh, so there's going to be no audience. She, right. Yeah. I, she'll I be in of, the wings then. She'll, yeah, yeah she'll, she'll be in the wings. Yeah. Uh, and he'll just point because like, oh, all my fans, <laughs> look, it, yeah. I could go on and on about him. This is like the worst <laughs> ticket I've ever seen. It's radical. It's leftist. Mm-hmm. It's freaking scary. And mm-hmm. I hope people remember to vote. Gosh, I hope so too. That's say crucial, that Michelle, it's is that getting people crucial. to get out. Because I'm a precinct chair here in Texas and I, I worry about you. that too because I – 
I worry about people, you know, who are, yes, they're engaged and they listen to things like this and they're, you know, they're very rabid about politics, but do they get out and do they vote? And that's what I really worry about. And people, they have to do it this yeah. election because yeah. we've said it a million times before. This is the most important election of your lifetime, but this one really is. This you know? one feels for real this time. scary. Yeah. <laughs> this one is freaking scary. Like we got bamboozled. Uh, you know, with this middle ground, middle of the road, Joe, Uncle Joe, everything's going to come back to normal. And we're as far yeah. lurching left as this country has ever yeah. been. And yeah. it will go even further. Ladies, mm -hmm. it is always great to see you. Thank you for being with me. Mock and Daisy, they mm -hmm. are Chicks on the Right. You can find them at chicksonright.com and Twitter and everywhere else. Great to see you, ladies. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Always great to be here. Yes. So Mock and Daisy, Chicks on the Right are always a lot of fun to talk to. And we feel it's important uh, as women to remind other women that we're not this monolithic block. We're not all putting abortion first on our list of concerns. We've got kids. We uh, pay taxes. We see what's happening in our states, in our neighborhoods, all over. Um, we are concerned about other people. I'm concerned about education, not only in my state, but nationally, how we are just dropping like a stone in the way that we educate our kids. This has me really concerned. So I thank them for being brave and doing good and coming on this podcast. Quick promotional note, I will be on Fox Business Network tomorrow night, Tuesday, ahead of the vice presidential debate. Uh, just putting in my two cents with with uh, that group because the bottom line with, with Dagan and Sean Duffy, uh, just... You know, I have some firsthand um, experiences in the state of Tim Walls, so I'm going to be brave and do good and get that out there. There's stuff you need to know. Um, and don't forget to vote. And also, if you have the chance, maybe give to a charity that can help out those folks in the southeast right now. They are so hurting in the wake of Hurricane Helene. Be brave. Do good. We will see you next time.